What's up guys, welcome to Southern Hike. I'm Taylor and today we're talking about why it's important to have a footprint with your tent. Guys, a common question I see online is, is do I need a footprint for my tent and what's the purpose of it? It's honestly more weight in my pack and why do I even need to bring it? Well guys, I just wanna break this down into three different points of view that I think are the most important parts of why you should carry one. And then we'll also talk about some ultralight options for you ultralight guys, as we all know. There's a video linked above talking about a reason why I'm not an ultralight backpacker. Check that video out. It's a lot of interest from a lot of different people. We thank y'all for watching it. But anyways, Let's talk about those three reasons why I think you should have a footprint. Reason number one is terrain. So rocks, sticks, roots, stumps, any kind with a jagged edge can tear through so many tents. There is some more heavy duty tents out there with a higher veneer, but there are so many things that can tear through the bottom of your tent. And when you have a double layer with a footprint, it prevents so much of that stuff from being able to tear through and ruin your tent. Second thing is, is dirty in your tent. Now my footprint, especially like a couple trips I've done over the past year, really dirtied my footprint up, but it prevented my actual tent from getting dirty. It just kind of took the brunt of it. All I had to do was take that footprint and just clean it outside and dry it out basically first and then shake it and it was easy to clean. That is another great reason why it's easy to use a footprint. That way you don't actually dirty up your actual tent on the ground. Now third reason, now this one is controversial, but for me it's a, a double waterproof. And now moisture and things like that from the ground, it kind of thickens, gives you more of a thermal layer from the ground but it also helps from water coming up from the ground and getting into your tent too. Now your tent should be waterproof, but this just doubles that capability. All right, so to go along with that, it's some side notes is, is that one thing I want to talk about the ultralight options. So there's a lot of DIY options you can use and a lot of people use like Tyvek, the stuff they put on the side of your house. It's a really good moisture barrier. You can buy sheets of it on Amazon. I'll make sure to link it. Another one is like polycryo. Now this is not as durable. Usually when they sell it, you buy it in a couple pieces of it because it does wear out. It can be very slippery, but polycryo is another option to use. It's the, another ultralight option. And then the third one is, is using an actual tarp. I would never do this. First thing is, it's heavy. Yes, not too heavy, but it takes weight. But have you ever folded a tarp into your backpack? It takes up a lot of room. It never folds like when you bought it. It's just not a good option. If you're carrying your, everything in your car and you're gonna tent right beside your vehicle, yeah, it works well, seals pretty well, it's durable, it protects your tent. I've seen a lot of people use them before, especially in like large campsites, but it's just not something that works well for using in your backpack. Now, another thing is, is there is some tents out there that don't need a footprint. The veneer on the base or the, or the bottom of it or the tub of it is a lot more durable and, and more capable of handling any kind of abrasive substance up under from tearing into it. So look out that for when you're buying your tent. There's some good tents out there that, that way you just skip having a footprint period. Now something else to mention, your footprint should always be, you know, probably four to six inches uh, on the end underneath the bottom of your tent. Don't ever have it further out than your tent because when water comes down, it's just gonna trap that water into the footprint and go right under your tent and then more capable for water to start coming through the bottom of your tent. And you definitely don't want that to happen. So make sure at all four sides that you bring it in at least four to six inches. That way your tent actually is larger than your footprint. And then the final part of it is, is just to say is, is that like we talked about the DIY options, yes, it does add, add weight to your pack, but honestly, even with my REI one, uh, my passenger one, um, it does, the footprint is very light. I think it's like no more than six or seven ounces. Yes, that adds up, but honestly, it's worth it to protect the bottom of my tent, so I still would highly recommend it. A lot of footprints are really light. Your DIY options for ultralight are super light, but yes, I really wouldn't consider it a big issue as far as weight. All right, guys, I just wanted to keep it simple. A lot of people see this and see the footprint, you know, and what's the need for it. Honestly, it's just an important part of your tent setup, a part of your big three, really. I've talked about that in one of our previous videos. Your footprint should be a part of your big three. It's very light. Don't consider it a big weight issue, but you should have one. Guys, thank you for watching. Thank you for all our new subscribers. Over the holidays, we've gained a, new, a lot of new subscribers, and we're really glad you're here. Make sure to comment what you do about a footprint below. If you carry one or if you don't carry one, and what's your reasons for that, for carrying one or not carrying one, we'd really love to hear about it. Make sure you like this video. Make sure to share it. Tell your friends about it. And guys, make sure to share and let them know everybody know about us. We thank you for all the new ones. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and make sure you hit the bell below. And guys, we'll see you on the next one. Thank you and have a great day.